I'm Johnny Smith. I'm Richard Porter. And this is Smith & Sniff, a podcast in which two friends talk about cars and lots of other things. Live! Now! Hello. I'm so tired now. <laughs> <laughs> so tired. It's really taken it out of you. It does. Um, hello, everyone. Um, thanks for coming. This yeah, is, thank you. This is nice. We are... Now, I've been going around saying, oh, we're doing a, a live recording in Glasgow, and then I realised it's sort of not Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of... And then I've been saying Glasgow. on previous recordings, it's Gifnock, and somebody emailed in, who's here tonight, actually, and said it's actually pronounced Gifnick. And I don't know if they're winding me up or not. <laughs> it's actually pronounced English prick. Um, but I realise that I, it may be safer to say that we are basically in Glasgow. <laughs> Is that OK to say that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. 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 Right. Um, my daughter, I told her that I was going to do a live show in Scotland. And she said, you're very lucky because it's a very beautiful country. Yes. And I said, that's right, it is. And then she said, but I don't like bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> She's six. Just on and I don't know where this strident opinion about bagpipes has come from. It's really weird. And then I had her parents' evening last night before I headed up here, and her teacher said, I hear you're going to Scotland. Oh, gosh. And I said, yes. Did she tell you that? She went, yeah, she did. And you don't like bagpipes, do you? And I said, no, wait, 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 hang on a second. I <laughs> She's not a bagpipe racist, is she? Well, it feels like, listen, it's not come from me. I mean, I, you know, I, it's on an as and when basis with bagpipes for me. I'm not, mm. I'm not particularly... I'm down, with, I'm down with the pipes. <laughs> yeah, I think they're all right. <laughs> I think they're atmospheric, haunting. Yeah. They've got, they've got, um, they've got an alert to them. But I wouldn't want one next to my bed at 5 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Very much not that. Did you, I, ages and ages ago, when I was trying to avoid doing proper work, I instead was, as I do, knobbing around on my computer making a bit of music. And <laughs> you I made it all little, about 15 minutes ago. Yeah, oh God. Are we going into what you. When we, we I was, I think I messaged you and went, oh, we're, we're going to Glasgow next week, that's exciting. And Johnny went, do a drum and bass version of the Taggart theme tune. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. Even better than that, it was no more than an hour after I said it that it arrived in my inbox. Well, it's not. It was, it's not difficult. I know. You just, just get the Taggart theme tune and put a drum and bass beat over. I'm not even sure it's entirely in time. But I think if you can, you could you should slip it into this edit. It is rather good, though. I'll maybe put it at the end of the recorded podcast. It's rather. Uh, good. Although we're, uh, we might be breaching copyright, mightn't we? We might get visited by the ghost of Taggart. <laughs> And then there'll be a... I'm not going to say it, because I promised I wouldn't do the accent, because it's insulting <laughs> and rude, and you people are better than that, even no. if I'm not. So. No, I don't want to do anything like that. I but, don't want to do any clichés. Uh, I did, a, I did a, another bit of music when I was desperately trying to avoid doing actual work that I'm paid for, um, about Jackie Stewart, <laughs> and, um, which I put on Twitter. It's out on Twitter somewhere from a few months ago. And then lots of people went, yeah, yeah, that's fine, but that needs bagpipes on it. Oh, gosh. And I don't have any bagpipes at home. And it's... Uh, Does anybody strangely... have bagpipes at home? <laughs> Does anybody? You might yeah. be... Do you? Is, are you the only person? I think, I think you're the only person that's got bagpipes at home. Brilliant. It's strangely hard to find a bagpipe synthesizer. <laughs> <laughs> and in the end, I found a sample of bagpipes. And so, it's like... Was it You're the Voice by John Farnham? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, well-known Scotsman... John Farnham from Australia. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so I started playing it to the same tune that the actual, that all the other instruments were, and it sounded fucking awful. <laughs> and I realised to make bagpipes sound right over other bits of music, you have to play all the wrong notes. And then it sounds quite good. Really? Yeah. Maybe I'll put that on the end of the podcast instead, because we won't get into copyright trouble. Apart from from Jackie Stewart. <laughs> My name is actually incorporated now. <laughs> oh, shit, I've done the accent. <laughs> I don't want to talk about this cliche Scottish stuff, so I was wondering what the proclaimers drove. <laughs> 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 and, and I just Googled it idly uh, when we were stopping uh, at the services a few hours back. 
sweet, sweet Scottish twins that they are. Mm. Anyway, I tried to look them up and their cars. Do you know what I came across instantly? I did not come across what they actually drove. I came across, these people obviously pay quite a lot for SEO on Google, mm. the Proclaimers. P-R-O dash claimers. <laughs> Have you been missold car finance? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not shitting you, this is true. The pro-claimers. And they chase missold car finance shysters. Uh, so I don't actually know what the pro-claimers drive. Um, so if anyone's, well, if anyone's listening or even in the audience here who, who has any idea what either of the pro-claimers drove, and they could be those sorts of people that buy identical cars. Surely they have identical cars. Well, they might, they might have really differing car opinions. They but might didn't get really they... shirty with one another. When they first came to prominence, I feel like they even had the same glasses. <laughs> and then as they got more famous, they kind of went, I'm going to forge my own glasses path here. So maybe in the 80s, they had identical... What did they have? Their first album came out in 87. That's the only thing I learned when I was doing research earlier. Yeah? Is that what? true? <laughs> Why? Is it, is that tr- doesn't look like you've made a lot of money in the music industry. I would drive, drive my around. Fiat 500 miles. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I assume that's where you were going with <laughs> it. Um, there are other 500 vehicles, are there not? Uh, f- there was a Ford 500. Was there? Yeah, in oh. America. Didn't they walk everywhere? Oh, they did, didn't they? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they did, actually. You're absolutely right. It's a good point, actually. Why don't they just get a car, the silly twats? <laughs> Saved an awful lot of shoe leather. Oh, because they were... Um, uh, what are those religious people in America that don't like technology? Mormon. No, um, uh, Amish. They're Amish. That's what are it they? is. Oh, yeah, they, they, they hate the car. The proclaimers. <laughs> <laughs> they, every, they, they walk on the hard shoulder. They throw cans at passing yeah. cars. <laughs> Ken's Is that why they were also taking, they were taking a look down the rail track just to make sure they weren't interested in trains? Well, they were dressed Not getting on that. They were trespassing. Oh, it's just the fastest way from A to B, isn't it, if you walk down the train line? They were nicking copper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. It's a writ from the proclaimers <laughs> telling us to shut up. Oh, gosh. I actually did, I was going to. I did rewrite some lyrics from the proclaimers. I don't know why I'm laughing because it's probably not that funny. Um, <laughs> and I was in two minds whether to bring it up so I don't think I'm going to so anyway let's talk about something else what, what would you like to talk about well uh, I don't know you, we could tell people how we got here today in separate cars because you came in, your, in a borrowed 24 Tesla <laughs> I did. it's a 24 it's a 24 Tesla I did I did come in a borrowed you might have seen it outside it's actually a tartan Tesla if you think about it Oh, because it's the plaid. Because it's the plaid edition. Mm. And some, some lovely follower of, of ours on Instagram went, the plaid is the over-shoulder traditional Scottish garment. Is that right? Yeah. There's not a lot of certainty in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they go... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> they sort of go, is it, well, is it the thing of the thing of the... Uh, yeah, I can't, yeah. It's one of them. But anyway, the, so the plaid is, I think, an over-the-shoulder number mm. from sort of Scottish warriordom. And... Um, but basically, it's, t- it's tartan. And there's a tiny little badge on the back. Yes. Very small. It actually looks extremely cheap and weird. Yes, I, does, I thought it? it was one of those things you take off when you buy the car, because yeah. it was protecting something else. But no, the car's crazy. Um, loads of boot space. I noticed you struggled. Got half a steering wheel. <laughs> yeah. You did struggle to negotiate a roundabout this afternoon. It's flipping lethal, the, the yoke. <laughs> I mean, it's not even funny. Lucky there's no roundabouts here. (laughs) Honestly, driving at a slow speed around town, the yoke is is horrendous. It's absolutely horrendous. You know those things that people at circuses and free party events have? Is it the Diablo? That's the thing with the string and the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine that saying, oh, do you fancy having a go on a thousand horsepower Diablo? (laughs) (laughs) Not, Not the Lamborghini. (laughs) <laughs> and you go, yeah, but that just sounds fucking stupid. Yeah, yeah it is. Isn't someone going to get hurt? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Might want to smoke some weed first, though. <laughs> Calm me down, you know. And put that tie-dye jacket back on, because you'll need that. <laughs> it's bonkers. You don't know where to hold it. And I always feel, feel that people who have those, like Diablo's, not yoke steering wheels, often wear a top hat. Oh, yeah. But too high and far back. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's a real kind of street entertainer look. 
and I don't know why. But I those I, amazing Billy Connolly shirts that he used to wear that went really long at the back. Do you remember those Billy Connolly live shirts? I don't know what the actual name of the shirts is, but whenever he was live, yeah, he always wore an exceptionally long back end shirt, like a mullet shirt, basically. Oh. <laughs> Do you know the ones I mean? Yeah, like someone who lives on a, in a California beach town would wear. That sort of <laughs> Yeah. Thing. Very loose. Yeah. Like a cam tail like shirt. Tan. Is it a cam tan? I don't know. No one knows. I've never studied the cut of a shirt <laughs> no, and the terminology right, right. associated. Yes. You're listening to Britain's number one tailoring podcast. But basically, <laughs> that with a thousand horsepower Diablo with lungs full of weed. Right. That. Okay. All right. That's what driving a Tesla. That's what driving with a, a Tesla yoke is like. Yes. See, I have a different steering problem. I came up here in an ID Buzz. Both and, electric, uh, just both electric reasons. by chance, but uh, it has a white steering wheel. Yes, yes. The ooh is well placed, my friends. It is. Now I know people don't read newspapers a lot anymore, but you certainly couldn't if you owned this car. <laughs> Equally, if you're a coal miner, very bad car. <laughs> That's a terrible coal miner car. But just everything. So I, thankfully, I, had, I, I stopped at a very grim services in Lancashire. <laughs> I don't know the name of it. But I knew it was grim as soon as I pulled in because <laughs> the loos were broken and so they put a porter cabin in the car park. <laughs> and that sets a tone. <laughs> and the tone is smelly misery. <laughs> so... I went in and I was, and there's a little Marks and Spencer and it's very small and they didn't have a lot of sandwiches and I was thinking, I really think I just want to eat something healthy. And I looked along all the shelves and I went with a pork roll in the end (laughs) because I couldn't be bothered to look anymore. I went back to the car. Any hoisin sauce on that? Well, no. I did have a hoisin sauce incident on a train last week. Oh, gosh. We'll come on to that because I know you love a hoisin sauce. I do, I love it, yeah. But... Thankfully, the car was still charging, so I thought I would eat the pork roll stationary rather than doing a driving eat. Oh, driving pork roll would be awful. Thank God. All the pork fell out of the roll (laughs) into my crotch. So I had sort of arse-warmed pork to reinsert into the roll. But then there was some kind of sauce, apple sauce in there. Yeah. Well, just pork pork grease. There was a bit of pork grease. But you ever realise when you sort of you've wiped your hands and then you realise there's sort of like a there's a blob of something has crept onto the back of your hand and then it creeps back (laughs) round again. So I got a bit of apple sauce on the white steering wheel of the Is this too much? Creeping pork sauce. (laughs) (laughs) Parked on your own at some dismal services. (laughs) Yeah. Painting a picture of my glamorous life. I've got to say, I had a I had um, an interesting, interesting uh, Mm. services situation. It didn't involve anything as interesting as that or glory holding, thank goodness. <laughs> um, however, um, farm shop at Westmoreland Services, not that far from here really, mm. stopped and went in, thought, oh, look, artisan bread, wholesome, warm meals, you know, good, 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 decent food and stuff, hot dinners. And I looked around and soup was available, soup of the day, I thought, oh, wonderful. And it all looked very wholesome and healthy, and then I went... The entire top shelf of all five fridges, iron brew. <laughs> and I thought, have I missed something? Is there some artisan iron brew? <laughs> oh, ooh, just imagine it. And I looked, and sure enough, there wasn't. It was all the same, same gear. But I thought, that's to counterbalance. You know, you've gone in there and had a lentil well, soup. Well, no, and... hang on a sec. I think there is artisan iron brew. Why? It's the stuff in the glass bottles. Oh. Because <laughs> it's better, right? Yeah. It just is. Everybody knows this. It's the same with Coca-Cola. I know someone that uh, brought some. I can't see him, though. Walter, are you here? Where are you? He Where is, is there. he? He's there. Okay. Hi, Walter. Walter's a friend of mine, and he's actually a fool as well, because <laughs> cause he flew up a long way to get here tonight, and I love you for that, and he didn't ask for a free ticket, so that's just too nice. Can we give him a round of applause, please? <laughs> You're a sweet, sweet guy. Well, now, hang on a sec. We were going to bring it. Well, did you, drink, did bring you it? drink it? No, I left it in a, I left it in a puppy cask. <laughs> 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 right, we're taking back that round of applause now. Yeah. Everybody do that. As <laughs> rewind. Um, there's a chap here, I think it's a chap, uh, who has driven down from 
Sky or one of the islands on the west coast? Yes. You, sir? It's you. Oh, well, see, you were just going, yeah, I know that. <laughs> Incredible. We're not worth it. No. Sadly. Really. Uh, but seriously, thank you. Thanks very much. Um, I, th- I think on that basis, you know, I wrote, I wrote something that I wanted to do at the top of the show and just completely forgot because we're really disorganised. But I thought, oh, we need to do some audience participation. So I'm going to shout faults and you're going to shout transit. Okay? <laughs> Is that all right? Sort of panto shit, really. <laughs> you ready? Faults. That is, it's quite frightening it's so up perfect. here. It might be all right down there, but it's fucking terrifying wanna, up I'm, here. I'm, I'm going to be a bit more aggressive with my delivery. I want you to be a little bit more aggressive with your delivery. You ready? Well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now that is what we call premature ejaculation. <laughs> yeah. Ready? Faults. Is that is so good. <laughs> you need to do this one now. No, I'm not doing any more. It's scaring me. Oh, is it? Yeah. Honestly. I was going to say stage three and you say sport. We, um, we, I... They want to do it. Let them, let them no, do I it. No, I can't. You say stage three. They say sport. It is a bit panto, but we realise they do pantos in this theatre. Oh, no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you guys are funny oh, yes, enough, for do. fuck's sake. <laughs> don't know why and, we bother. Um, but we, so they let us into one of the dressing rooms backstage, but it's the only dressing room, as we discovered, that doesn't have a loo. And we were sitting in there going, because I was like, I really need a piss, but it means walking all the way around there and up there, and I'm quite lazy. And they're like, Widow Twanky can't possibly be going for a slash up there <laughs> yeah. during the interval. Yeah. Because the kids would be going, Daddy, why is Widow Twanky having a stand-up wee? <laughs> In that dress, I mean, they're huge. So it turns out we just we've been given the poor Dick Whittington's got something to do. <laughs> you know. Daddy Buttons is having a poo. <laughs> um, anyway, it turns out there's other dressing rooms. We were just given the one for people who aren't trusted to have access to running water. So um, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> what else are we going to talk about? Oh, I know. I was going to say something else about driving up here. It's a general observation. Do it. Do it, Rich. Did it involve grease and pork? No, I'd wiped it off by then. But I was in the outside lane on the motorway, and I got the cruise on, so you're sort of set at speed, and then there was a car that wasn't going that much more slowly than me, but then I could see a situation ahead where a lorry had pulled out, I thought, that person in the cash kai is going to want to pull out. Maybe I should ease off and let them in. This is is serious shit. And then I was like, (laughs) they're not doing anything yet. I don't think they've looked ahead. And by then I'd come alongside them and I looked across and I was like, I'm going to try and size up what they're going to do next. This is like a James Bond car chase. (laughs) (laughs) But a really slow, shit, boring one. (laughs) And as I looked across, the answer to what they were going to do was immediately obvious because they were a wheel gripper. (laughs) The whites of their knuckles (laughs) were visible to the window of their cash guy on the M74. And that told me immediately... This person is a fuckwit. (laughs) (laughs) And what they did was almost drive into the back of the lorry because they couldn't process what else to do with a car next to them. And I suddenly thought, it's an immediate giveaway, someone who can't drive. If they're they're gripping the wheel so tightly, like that, they're almost, you know, like the wheel in that ID buzz that's white would look like they were sort of piping icing out of their (laughs) fists. Then you know they're going to be no good at basic driving tasks I don't know if you'd grip the, the yoke like you that. couldn't ah, you couldn't grip no. the yoke and you can't palm it so when you're in a car park like the one this theatre car park tonight a lot of tight spaces right a few of you have come in some lovely cars sweet sweet cars <laughs> so a Chrysler Horizon who's got what the who's got the Chrysler nice that who's got nice. the uh, the Soviet people carrier nice <laughs> very nice <laughs> what is the Soviet people carrier a bar- yeah. a bar- Johnny a bar- B. B. Barkus or V. Varkus? B. Barkus. B. Bar- Barkus. I was nearly there. I said Varkus, but it didn't quite sound right. Sound like a foreign exchange student. <laughs> and I thought, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Fantastic. He's got cigarettes and a flick knife, and you don't know how he got them <laughs> through the airports. <laughs> and cards with some exotic <laughs> imagery depicted on them. The other thing I noticed on the way up here is there's still the dot matrix signs. You know when there's, there's no major incident to warn of? Yeah. And they, they've gone fog. And you go, yeah, I know. 
I'm in Scotland, of course there's fog. <laughs> it's when they just say random sort of safety messages. Yeah. But I drove past one today and it said, fasten your seatbelt. What? If like, you'd been on the road for two hours, the bastard car would have been telling well, you. Well, that's all what about I was it. thinking. When did cars start binging at you to fasten your seatbelt? Oh. It's a good twenty odd years ago. Yeah. So that sign is basically for people in like Ford Sierras and stuff. It's a, so it's actually quite a niche message. Chrysler Horizon. Chrysler Horizon. Oh. How many does it seat? Just out of interest. Four or squeeze. Disappointing for the love shack, I would suggest. <laughs> <laughs> what, you, what you have to do is you have to do some shuttle runs. So yeah, I've done it before in the past at a few parties. I've said, look, it's not far. Well, hang I'll on drop a minute. the first four off, come back, grab no, the next four. No, but you're seeing a big sign that says it's 15 miles to the love shack. That's well, a 30 mile round trip. Well, it's going to take you ages. As we know, the love shack's been rebranded, but we mustn't talk about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Which, unfortunately, still tickles me. Um, oh, that reminds me. I was going to do some little sort of stitchbacks to some stuff that we've, um, uh, that we, we've talked about in previous things. We've had so many messages about coach drivers and school <laughs> coaches. <laughs> it's the biggest response since... What was the last one we got over? Well, a wheelbase swaps. Oh, wheelbase swaps. <laughs> yes. And then yeah. we got a message from someone that just said, can you stop talking about wheelbases, please? <laughs> Which is fair enough. Um, uh, a listener called Adam Hayes wrote in, he said, I enjoyed hearing about Ray Maddox's Mecca coach company. <laughs> if you remember, there was the local coach company when I was growing up. <laughs> this guy called Ray Maddox called it Macclesfield Executive Coach Company Association or something, just so he could call it Mecca, which seems a little inappropriate. Do you think I'd be the parrot on his show? <laughs> no, that was the other guy with a kestrel. <laughs> All perfectly normal. It, it was the could, 80s. It could sound more Phoenix Knights. <laughs> <laughs> Get down here, the Kestrels attack one of the kiddies. Uh, Adam says uh, uh, the story about Mecca Coach Company it reminded me of a local minibus that I see tearing around down here in the Garden of England. The company is called Travel in the South. And by subtly, unsubtly capitalising the first letter, of, you're way ahead of this. <laughs> capitalising the first letter of each word in their logo, you can't miss their white minibuses <laughs> with tits written down the sides. <laughs> Seriously? I'm gonna, I didn't look this up. I assume Adam isn't fibbing. I used to live in Cardiff and in the 90s and there was, um, there was a local cafe called The Warmer's Toast. <laughs> yeah. Really? And then they decided, they, I think they knew what they were doing because they had a new awning made where they just went with the acronym. And they put the full stops well, in to make it look like they weren't trying to pull a fast one, but the awning said Twat Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it was known as locally. Um, twat, twat Cafe? So I got, there's so many of these. I went nuts and printed loads of them. Come on, I, I want like, another. I couldn't pick a... I think ages ago I went past a, a bus um, which said Ride the Beaver on the side of it. I told you. <laughs> yes, we've discussed. I mentioned it on the podcast, and it turns out it's a totally legit bus company from Leicestershire. Um, um, grab, uh, one of them says grab the beaver I think it's to do with <laughs> I that was to do with like you know um, like a subscription get you know pay for the year and you get it a lot cheaper and the other one was ju- jump on the beaver or ju- anyway it's an awful lot of beaver chat uh, for uh, bus travel a listener called Matt in Hitchin that's how he signs himself Matt uh, from Hitchin yeah uh, he says uh, it's somewhere around 1995 I'm living in a tiny Bedfordshire village Mum would drive us to the next village every morning to catch the bus to school. One of those small, rural, private coach companies where every coach was a different colour, barely functioned, and had a strong smell of either diesel or piss. Well, that's, <laughs> that's what happened. That was, that was me. Well, that was, was my everyone, childhood as well. Yes. <laughs> uh, the driver, I think he was called Alan, was probably about 50. Definitely fat, bearded and sweaty. And he frequently kept a bag of sweets in between his legs, which he'd offer up to the kids as they were getting on. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not going entirely in that direction, but there is a twist. Well, yeah, that's what I'm worried about. (laughs) At some point, Alan disappeared and was replaced by someone less disgusting. (laughs) (laughs) Fast forward a few few months later, I get on the bus. You're right, Johnny. Uh, For the tape, Johnny is drowning in a pint of lager now. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> Carry on, carry on. Okay, so uh, Alan's, Alan's disappeared. Uh, fast forward a few months later, I get on the bus as normal. 
Emma from down the road gets on. She looks excited and is waving a colour supplement from one of the Sunday papers. Remember in the days of the News of the World in the 90s, every weekend there will be some elaborate true crime story in the colour supplement. Well, it transpires that in his spare time, Alan was moonlighting as a contract killer. <laughs> He'd be... An actual murderer? Well, not a very good one, as it turns out. What, because they weren't all dead? Yes. What? He'd been hired by a housewife to off her husband so, so she could escape with her boyfriend and the life insurance. Thing is, Alan wasn't very good at the whole murdering thing, and despite sinking a hammer into the husband's skull, the man didn't die. Alan got caught, and if I remember rightly, both he and the woman were locked up. Looking back, I'm surprised all our parents weren't more concerned. <laughs> The 90s was a funny old time. <laughs> Shit the bed. Contract killer. Sweaty with the Alan. sweet. Sweaty crotch sweets as well. <laughs> I, bet he, I bet he'd had a pork roll. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but not, some... no, not a white steering wheel, I would hope, because you'd get the blood stains on it. Well, there we go. Want, I, do, I, I have I no idea about that those. letter. Uh, there's, um, Any more coach drivers' uh, favourites? These, these are, oh, this one's quite horrible. I won't do that. Um, <laughs> No, I won't do that one either. Okay, no. <laughs> Some of them are a bit... Okay. What, uh, like not funny or a bit I gruesome? I don't know, they're just a bit grim. Any more murderers? Uh, blah, 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 murderer, 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 no. One-armed taxi driver, no. <laughs> uh, no. Okay, so... No, I won't do that one. Uh, there's a chap called Chris Rowland said... Uh, I've come to the conclusion that to win the contract for the school bus service, you had to be a bit eccentric... I grew up in Suffolk and from 1979 had to use the school bus service to take me to upper school. It was operated by Mully's Motorways and it was a shagged out route master. <laughs> route so master. Basically, from what I can gather, it's health and safety back then. The children were, were at the, the bottom of the importance <laughs> list. So any buses that were like fully knackered slash dangerous. Someone who works in the bus and coach industry wrote to us and said exactly that. What? That is where a bus goes to die. Its last job is school kids. Right. It's probably like, you know, tours of the continent for yeah. retirees. Yes. Open prison transport. <laughs> and then kids. Um, You've just reminded me of, of what happened on one of, one of our bus, uh, school bus drop, drop-offs. My mate Rich, Big Rich, not you, uh, Bigger, <laughs> Uh, and uh, we, he, we all got off the bus at the end of school and he, and he used to prank people now and again and he decided to run round the back of the coach and, ju- and hang on to the back of it just below the window um, <laughs> <laughs> and then the bus went off a cloud of black diesel smoke of course, of course. and I, we thought he was going to jump off and just like run along but the bus gathered pace obviously oh, much God. quicker than he expected <laughs> So he was still on it when it was, it was actually going quite fast. And we were going, what's he going to do? Because the, the driver doesn't know he's there. So he just, he, just, he just let go. What? Yeah. Just let go. Had to take him to hospital. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Had a face full of tarmac, basically. Yeah. Not, not cool. Not so cool. Um, anyway, so... Chris- not recommended. <laughs> Chris was taken to school in, a, in, as he describes it, a shagged out route master. He says, our driver slash mechanic was Bob, or Hunch as we called him, on account of his large frame crammed into the cab. Oh, because he yeah, a separate cab on a route master. Mm. Policing the platform at the back was conductor Frank. I don't know his real name. He was called Frank because he wore a beret and a Mac like Michael Crawford <laughs> from Some Mothers Do Haven't. <laughs> a rumour developed that Hunch kept a pet in the cab. The rumour was established as true when the route master was retired and we got a shagged out coach instead. Alongside Hunch, in an unzipped shopping bag, there was a ferret. <laughs> <laughs> what? A couple of years later, we got a new coach and driver. This coach had a cassette deck and the driver had two tapes. A qu- Queen's A Night at the Opera and Meatloaf's Bat Out of Hell. Amazing. Come sixth for my opted to cycle to school. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris, for that. Um, there was one, there was somebody, well, loads of people actually wrote to us and said, and it just reminded me, this was a thing, I don't know if anyone else used to do this, that because the coaches were always really old and they had cloth seats, yes. one of the games you'd play is just to bang the seat as hard as you could 
Oh, yeah. And 20 years of, frankly, hand skin. Skin would Just come out. Hand and face skin. And loads of people wrote in and said that's what they used to do, and I'd forgotten about that, but that was definitely a thing. And the, you, you, you could operate the, 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 the skylights at the rear, and if you lifted the front portion, you could cre- create ram air. So if someone had done a devastating guff in the back of the bus, <laughs> yeah. I remember you'd, you'd force it to ram air, and the bus driver would shout, Just sh- shut it down, it'll blow the back window out, or it used to make up something. <laughs> Never did, but got rid of the sinister smell. <laughs> yeah, sweet times, happy times. I don't, I'm just, I, I did, I probably... This is all going to be about coach drivers tonight. No, it's not, honestly, <laughs> it's not. Where um, have all the creepy coach drivers gone? That's a good question. Where have they all gone? <laughs> Work prison. <laughs> True, hopefully. Mm. Yeah. I do, shall I do, uh, I do one more? And then we'll stop talking yeah, about Yeah, yeah, one, go on, one more for the road. <sighs> um, this is from... Uh, Nikki, now I'm going to massacre his surname. Pranit, 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 Vitch. Okay. Sorry, Nikki. Anyway, Nikki, uh, <laughs> who was writing to us from a departure lounge in America on his way back to Cumbria. I don't think they do direct flights to Cumbria. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nikki, if you're listening, you probably need to get one to, I don't know, Manchester would be, or Glasgow. Then you could just drive down from here. Yeah. Anyway. Interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Nicky sends us his memories of the probably now long dead Mr. Simpson of Simpson's Coaches. I started Cockermouth School back in 94 and all through year seven, where I lived, we were blessed, blessed with fancy red stagecoach luxury coaches, working lights, heaters, only one piece of chewing gum on the chairs. Roll on a few years and we were told our coaches would change and we'd be getting Simpson's Coaches. First day of new term, I'm standing outside the bus shelter where my friend and I hear this god-awful rumble as one of those classic 1970s coaches appears, straight out of holiday on the buses. It smelt strongly of fresh creosote, and when we looked back, the whole side of the bus was lined with plywood. (laughs) (laughs) The door... (laughs) Creosote! I know. (laughs) Gets worse. The door was manual, and Mr Simpson opened the door while furiously chewing chewing gum and exhibiting the strongest facial tick I'd ever seen. (laughs) All the other kids had moved to the back of the bus, far away from Mr. Simpson, leaving us on the front seat. Driving through the Cumbrian countryside, Mr. Simpson would often randomly shout and wave at sheep. (laughs) He would reach over with an old dipstick and smack the front of the handrail in front of us and spend more time with his eyes closed than with them open. With an an old dipstick? I know, I don't understand Who carries an old dipstick about? (laughs) It was terrifying. But this is not the most terrifying thing about our time with Simpsons coaches. Oh gosh, he's not a murderer, is he? (laughs) Not quite. I say coaches, he only had the one. And this was proven when he rolled up with one of the side windows smashed in, two rows of chairs black and charred, and glass all over the floor. (laughs) with With a huddle of terrified children in the back corner of the bus. Now it turned out the previous evening someone had petrol bombed his coach. But apparently, he still deemed it fine for transporting children. (laughs) Cue a 30-minute drive in midwinter with no side window, every surface covered in soot, and the smell of molten formica and chair foam in the air. Oh, my gosh. The coach was noticeably emptier on the journey home, as many parents had decided to pick up their kids from school (laughs) rather than let them catch the death bus. (laughs) We wondered how the whole bus didn't burn down. And it turned out that Mr. Simpson slept on the bus overnight. What? (laughs) And had been quick enough to deal with it. This explained the scabby sleeping bag shoved up in the overhead rack. (laughs) Oh, gosh. You can't make this shit up, can you? Seriously. I was about to say, you think of the amount of inflammable materials that a 70s bus was made from. Yeah. That bad boy would have been up in 15 seconds, 20 seconds. Well, thank goodness for me. Unless a man was Mr. Simpson who lived on on the bus he took children to school in. I just can't. It's quite tragic. It is quite tragic. He would have had a cold night's sleep the night that the side windows were put in. I'd imagine that, yeah, he, that was his first thought, rather than, oh no, yeah. all these children are going to get cold. <laughs> Drat, he would have said. Yeah. <laughs> Old school word, seldom yes. used now. Drat. Drat. Yeah, I like drat. Yeah. It makes you feel like a cartoon character. Yes, it is. It is a Particularly bit... if you just like, put a Stanley knife through your thigh or something, you just go, drat. <laughs> There's quite, something quite elegant about it. Do you remember a few uh, months back, perhaps, we, it was actually longer than that, we talked about Michael McDonald, the singer. Yes, we did. 
Now, not a local man, despite his name. No, I mean Scottish name, but I don't know if there's Scottish heritage there. Could I'd, be. I'd assume so. Some distance, but... But he's... Where is he from? America. I don't ah. know. I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. Okay, it's fine. We'll look at um, it later. So we, we had some intel, because we thought that, in, in our cliched ways, he probably drove something like a flat nose. 911, you know, 930 turbo. I thought we pegged him as a Lexus SC430. <laughs> With the foldable aviator sunglasses <laughs> that he's constantly sitting on. <laughs> we did have him down as a folding nose bridge sunglass guy. Yeah. Well, we don't know if that's still the case, but we do know that he used to drive, or still does possibly, because mm. it could be old money spec, a Subaru Forester. <gasps> So not only has he got a Scottish surname, but I think a Subaru Forester is quite a popular Scottish vehicle. It's a very rugged, practical, awesome and car. And being a Forester is probably quite a popular Scottish job on account of <laughs> all the many beautiful Foresters. Being here. a Forester. Yeah. So MacDonald, actually, dry, he goes for the stealth option yeah. of just cruising around in the Forester, probably got an entire glove box of no-name sunglasses <laughs> that don't quite fit. Yeah. None of them quite fit. So he goes for the ones that fit, fit, fit the best out of the shit bunch. Yeah. Puts them on, folds the, <laughs> folds the mirror down and goes, no, it still look like a pedo. Try again. <laughs> no, okay, offender. No, let's try this one. Okay, no, spy. What about this one? Are you allowed to tell everyone who gave you that info about Michael McDonald's car? Yes, I Go think on. so. Name drop away, my friend. Well, it was, it, it was, it was Marino Franchitti... We mention them almost every podcast, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, because every time we come up with a topic of discussion, they go, I know something about that guy. That's the only thing. I, mean, I know if, someone if, that lived Marino near him. and his brother didn't keep messaging us. I think that they used to hang out with Michael McDonald. I think so. I think they're building up to that, aren't they? Yes. He's oh, boy. Also He's you also a Capricorn. <laughs> <laughs> Don't add more complexity into this. Yeah. Yeah. He's also allergic to Weetabix. Can we... Oh, God, it's too much can, info. Can we flesh out this a little bit? He's also a Capricorn. Is that a reference to his music that we're not getting? No, it's the I've got to put my hand up and say, I still don't know what Yamo B there means. Do you? I think it's something he's seen written on his Forester because it's actually a Japanese import. Ah! <laughs> and he's just read it phonetically. That's exactly what it is. It it's actually, a quality control yeah, thing, isn't it? It just means washer fluid in here, but he's... <laughs> he's there trying to read kanji and he just can't get his head around it, so... And just that, that single has, has bought him dozens and dozens of Foresters. Well, the gearboxes go, don't they? So he keeps a stash of them around the back of his ranch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fact. Fact. Does live on the run. Was it, was it Michael McDonald that Dario was annoying with his straight... Pu- no, it was yes. Billy Ray Cyrus, that wasn't was it? That was Billy Ray Cyrus. Yeah. <laughs> Taurus. Taurus. Tor- <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> Are you making this up? Because it's impressive. We can't check. Yeah. Do another... Look, we'll think of a name and you shout out the... Yeah. <laughs> right, who are we going to say? Uh, I get, uh, another Frank Kitty. No, I need someone whose birthday I know so that I can... I don't mind him lying. It's good. It's entertaining. Yeah. It's when he starts making up star signs. <laughs> Moulinex. What? <laughs> Not sure that is one. Um, what else are we going to talk about? I've done, I've done coach driver uh, emails. Although I've got loads more, but I won't, I won't do that. Well, but let's have a pause because we'll come back to some of those coach drivers. A bloody murderer. I still can't believe the... Contract killer. Contract killer, but not a very good one. <laughs> well, <laughs> beat that, other podcasts about cars. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hear the intercooler talking about contract killers from the 80s, oh, do you? No. <laughs> Actually, I have got some interesting news. Just remembered. Okay, a few weeks ago, <clears throat> I was on the school run, and I drove driving back from dropping the kids off, and this huge tractor was coming the other way. You know the ones with double double wheels on both front and rear sets. It takes the whole damn road up on the front as well. Front as well, crikey! Because I think it had to go across exceptionally boggy terrain. Yeah. What with all the weather we've been having. Oh, it's been some weather. And. But what caught my eye, I, I, I saw the wheel bait, I saw the wheel, the width, the track width a long way away and was interested. Mm. But as it came towards me, something else caught my eye. You know they have those big counterweights on the front of tractors? Well, this had an enormous counterweight. And even better than that, straight out of a fucking Hanna-Barbera cartoon, there was a kennel on the front of it. What? <laughs> there, was a, there was a kennel 
right on the front, like, like a metre out from the front of the, the bonnet and the lights and everything, and out of the kennel was a collie's face. Oh, my God! <laughs> there, were, there was a dog living in the front of the tractor. Basically, the crumple zone was the dog. Now... I laughed like hell, I had to pull over. I'm not... I was going to say Paul Hollywood, who do I mean? That dog guy, Graham... Graham Dog, off the telly. <laughs> Graham Dog. Graham Hall, is it? Graham Hall. And Oates. Yeah. Oates. <laughs> Hall only does dogs, Oates hates dogs. Yeah, he he's a cat guy. Cats and rabbits, yeah. only. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm no Graham Hall. I, yeah. don't, I, I know a little bit about dogs, because I have one. Yeah. Was that the happiest dog you've ever seen? It, it, was, it was loving life. Because they, <laughs> they fucking love the wind in their ears, don't I they? I couldn't dogs? believe it. I mean, it's on the biggest tractor you've You never hear Graham Hall say that, do you? He never goes, they fucking love it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just going to go and scratch his head. They fucking love that. (laughs) See this ball? Guess what I'm going to do with it? (laughs) That's right. They fucking love it. (laughs) Late night with Graham Hall. (laughs) Johnny's gone again. He's drowning in the lager. Oh, I'm going to stop drinking. He's got, a, he's got a sister programme, though, about cats. <laughs> See this tinfoil? They fucking hate that. Oh. <laughs> got this little fella here. I'm going to brush him the wrong way. They fucking hate that as well. <laughs> Just when you let this Persian go to sleep, what you do then is reach behind you and <laughs> produce that cucumber that you've been displaying. <laughs> oh, my God. And so the cat goes batshit. <laughs> I think it's a dormant snake. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Do that. It's that amazing kung fu film, Dormant Snake. Possible danger. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Dormant Snake Alarmed Cat. <laughs> With Graham Hall. Yeah. <laughs> I saw Graham Hall on the telly once and he had a Freelander. I think it was a Freelander 2. Quite a good car. Good car for a doggy person, I guess. Well, but I think he had his number plate was something like Woof One. That's shit. I just went, give it a rest. That's time. <laughs> I, um, it was my birthday the other week, and I, um, I, I treated myself. I went to a scrapyard with my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, it was a really sunny day, cold but sunny. My favourite kind of day, actually. I like a crisp, a crisp, sunny morning. I went to a local scrapyard, and my brother said, you're going to love it, you're going to love it, Johnny. There's a Reliance scimitar in which it's had definitely a, a dead person in it. And I went... <laughs> <laughs> I went, that is so yeah, dark. Apparently there was this coach driver who was offering yeah, people... And- <laughs> I said, I'm not going there for that, that's dark. But, but we went for something legitimate uh, that definitely didn't come out in Greg's toolbox. And I was in there and I was noticing a huge amount of early Freelanders in there. Oh. Loads. I spotted like six of them. The ones with the sort of clip-on bit yeah, on the yeah. back. Yeah. And I said, because Greg went, oh, look at all this old Land Rover toilet. And I went, because he, he, he hates them. Uh, probably rightly so, but, uh, but I went, yeah, but I think they're going to be classic soon. I think they're going to suddenly like, get a bit of a, a cult following, you know, that's... What do you reckon? Am I lying? Well, it's sort of... It's kind of law of diminishing... Not law of diminishing returns. What am I talking about? It's where, it's where the, 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 the pool... The war of attrition. War of attrition would be a better way of describing it. Because they go... The, um, or the wear and tear gear of goes, doesn't it, on the... I don't know why I'm looking Does anybody know anything about Who's early Lander freelanders? Put your hand up if you've had an early freelander. That's four people. Ooh. Uh, okay. Give me a quick verdict. Good, bad. <laughs> shit. Good or shit? Um, shit. You at the top? The, the interior wasn't up to scratch, so Victoria Beckham had to redesign it. The interior wasn't up to scratch, so Victoria Beckham had to redesign it. And she did all the work now, as well. Now, is she a Capricorn? She's a grafter, Is she a thing. Capricorn? <laughs> She was in that studio day and night, clay under her fingernails. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you know what? I saw her once. She was trying to eat a pork roll. <laughs> and, uh... In a stationary minibus. Oh, she was. Yeah. No, it's in, a, in an evoke. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know which bits of this are true, and I'm assuming, <laughs> it's, it's, I'm assuming none I've of never, it. I've only seen her at the evoke launch. That's Did the only you? time I've ever seen Victoria Beckham. Yeah. Fact. I was, I was going to say, I think that... Uh, as you get older, birthdays get less memorable, don't they? Because you don't have a party as such, unless it's a landmark birthday. I'd go into a scrap, I'll be the brothers up there. That's, that's quite a memorable one. Because I was having this conversation yeah. with someone the other day, and he just went, you don't remember birthdays in your sort of 
once you get past about 35. And I went, no, I do. I remember, I think, like my 35th or 36th birthday because I had a chat with Mike Smith off the telly about the M25. What? <laughs> remember Mike Smith? And that's sadly no longer with us. Yeah. When he wasn't on the telly anymore or the radio, yeah. he set up, a, or he'd already set up a company that did filming from helicopters, flying TV. I remember flying TV. And that was what he did when he wasn't on the telly. He spent part of his time flying around helicopters and the rest of his time being married to the lovely Sarah Green, also sweet, off the telly. Sweet, sweet Sarah Green. Who I once heard say in the corridors of BBC Pebble Mill to the person she was with, oh my God, it's pissing it down. <laughs> and I was quite shocked because she was on Blue Peter. <laughs> and I never heard her say that on Blue Peter. Maybe once. And... Um, but Mike Smith, yeah, because he, he used to do the filming for Top Gear. Before drones were a thing, we used to, when we had the money, we'd film stuff from helicopters, and it was always Mikey Smith and his lot in, um, in the chopper. And he was in our office one day, and it happened to be my birthday. And he came over and said hello, and we had a chat about the M25. And I thought, what a birthday. <laughs> yeah, and that's what and I I've never forgotten well. it. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. He didn't um, like the M25. I, I remember mean, the does? story about uh, very early drones... When they were petrol powered. <laughs> what? Yes, they weren't actually called drones. You're were... thinking of lawnmowers? No. No, no. It was that. It was that transition between RC helicopters and and what we now know as drones. And some of and them those had really little engines. Yeah, really high revving. Yeah. You know. Anyway, so there was one of those that Top Gear had hired, not the TV, but the um, the mag and the. The website. I wasn't on the shoot because I've never worked for them. But I got told about it by some friends. <laughs> and this guy had, a, had, brought, had driven a van all the way over to the, the Thingy Pass. What's the, the Stelvio Pass? Mm. And he had two of these helicopters. Um, not a helicopter. <laughs> what if you're a quadcopter thing? And he'd spent, he said, as they were setting it up, they were saying, we've got real high hopes to get the shots that we want. They had some supercars coming down the, down the, the, the hills and the switchbacks. He said, I've spent my whole life savings um, developing these two. You know where this is going, don't oh, you? Oh, God. <laughs> he said, I've spent, he spent my, I spent my whole life savings developing these two. I think they're going to be revolutionary for the industry. And they went, OK, cool. Well, we haven't got much time. It's like, you know, it's dawn, and we want to get these shots. We've got six supercars. We want, we want the mountain nice and quiet. We need you to come up away from the road and then out over the edge of the ravine and get the cars coming by. Plenty of atmosphere. I don't even know why I'm going to finish this because you kind of know where this is going. <laughs> anyway, so, supercars at the top. Um, the walkie-talkie, go, go, go. All the cameras are rolling. Drone guy that's not a drone. I don't bloody know the name of the thing. Uh, gets off the ground and then moves out to over the edge of the ravine ready to come in and swoop in. Immediately, one of the engines dies and it just disappears. <laughs> <laughs> It's never seen again. <laughs> the man is visibly broken, but tries to stay professional because all the cars are on their way down. They've paused the cars and said, OK, I'm really sorry about that. We'll deal with that in a minute. Can you get the, the spare one going? Yeah, I can do that. I'll do that. Compose yourself. OK, strikes up this other one. This is like an episode of Casualty. <laughs> you know the bad thing's coming. you just got to figure out when. Strikes up this other non-helicopter p- piston quadcopter thing. OK, and... He says, I'm not going to go straight over the edge. I'll go along a bit, and then I'll move out as the cars come towards me. Okay, make it happen. Warm this bastard up. Action. Right, okay. Off we go. This thing goes along. (laughs) As the Lambos and whatever else. There might have been a very early McLaren MP4, 12C thing. He goes out to the edge of the ravine. Again, I think (laughs) changing air pressure or something. (laughs) It's like you flushed it down the toilet. It's gone. (laughs) The guy just switches the remote off, apparently, puts the, puts the aerial down and just says, my life's over. <laughs> and, and, and we have a mutual friend who used to be the editor of Top Gear. He said, listen, we're probably not going to be able to pay you because you didn't actually get any of the shots. The guy, the guy just got in the van, apparently, and just drove two days straight home and didn't say anything to anybody and was never heard from again. That wasn't the man whose initials are CT, was it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So he's usually very nice. There's usually a moral to these stories. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, wait for 10 years and get a DJI drone yeah. for about a grand. Wait for the technology. Does everything better. Apparently, to... these drones have cost 30-something grand oh, each. Oh, God. Each. Yeah. Um, it's not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> so, yeah. I wanted to uh, read out a message from a listener called Heather, Heather Baker. Uh, she says, I hope you can settle an argument for us. While I was diligently preparing dinner a few nights back, I couldn't help but notice that my soon-to-be husband, Alex had eBay open on a listing for a Rover SD1 for sale in our area. When I made some polite inquiries regarding whether there was anything more useful he could be doing, he informed me this was part of him scoping out potential cars for our wedding day. Oh, wow. Which is coming up this September. When I expressed what I consider to be an appropriately derisory noise, I was informed that apparently a Rover SD1 is in fact a highly suitable wedding car and that any bride would be lucky to be driven away from the church <laughs> in such a car. Lucky? I remain unconvinced. And so here I am at the crux of the question. Does a Rover SD1 make a good wedding car? Well, I think we should put this out to the audience. Hmm. <laughs> if, uh, what trim level, asks a man down here? It's a very good point. That is a really uh, good Unfortunately, point. Heather doesn't say. Is she a, is she a Van den Plaar lady? Diesel. 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 <laughs> <laughs> in sickness or in health, in an SD1 petrol or diesel. Wait, I, could, I think it's the diesel I one. Think, I just, think I can, on. You can barely hear it, Tom! <laughs> Thing. No, it's, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's one of those there terrible no... foreign market versions with the wrong engine and the wrong trim. Well, if it was like a yeah, two litre O series, then no, it's not worth the. F I mean, it's got to be a V8 one, surely. I think so. I, I think mean, so. the fact that Heather is not convinced suggests to me that Alex should immediately abort this plan. <laughs> I believe it's an old Hebrew expression happy wife, happy life. <laughs> And he would be doing well to heed by that. Get a Fiat Panda. Get a Fiat Panda. Oh, well. <laughs> Excellent segue, my friends. That's not... <laughs> it's not the shittest thing anyone's shouted out, you know. No. That's actually quite good. I think I'm going to have to sell that bloody panda. Not because my wife is sick of it. She's kind of over it now. Does she know, though? Does she know the full truth? No. Okay. <laughs> What she knows is. Does she listen? Was... She doesn't listen to this podcast, does she? Well, now this is where it gets tricky. Okay. <laughs> My wife has very recently become into podcasts. Oh, shit. She was previously just a radio listener in the car. And suddenly, she started, she really got into that diary of a CEO. And now our house is fucking full of Huel. Oh, God. Because. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're aware of this, but diary the guy of a who does Diary of a Siri CEO, he quite likes Huel. I think he quite likes him as well. He does, doesn't he? Because yeah. she said to me, listen to a couple of those. I know it's terribly bad form to slag off other podcasts. And he's, no, no, of course, it's fine. the biggest podcast in Britain. And we're just... Diary of a Stroker? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I've never made a diary. Actually, I did between 1989 and 1995. Yeah. Diary of a Teenage CEO... Oh, God, I think Sam fancies me from the year above. Oh, no, she doesn't. She's really fit, though. Um, it, and it, so it is like that. Yeah. Uh, so, um, where was I? Oh, yeah, Panda. She, she no, will. my wife does sometimes listen to this podcast if she's run out of all other podcasts. <laughs> so this is a high-risk game. But essentially, she's aware that it was at the garage for a very long time because it <laughs> needed, and for the tape I'm doing air quotes now, a new part. <laughs> What, what she doesn't know, and again for the tape, I'm going to do needless air quotes this time, that the new part was a new engine. These are facts. But it's okay, because it was in fact a second-hand engine, and it only cost me £100. But I think when she hears the phrase new engine, she'll roll her eyes so hard that no amount of fuel will get them back again. <laughs> so... I haven't told her. It's on a need-to-know basis. Yes. What's going on with the panda? Uh, it has to go back to the garage now to get what I hope is just an airlock out of the cooling system, so the heater will work again. 
just in time for summer. My, <laughs> my, my brother doesn't listen to this podcast. Uh, but when I was having, having a chat with him around the scrapyard uh, <laughs> last week, romantic times, Bremen, um, I, I said to him, I said, oh, we were talking about our school, old school buses, our school coaches the other week. I said, you should listen to the podcast because there's that, do you remember our old bus? Buses, and he, he's, he's Rain Man. He, he reeled off three of the number plates that he could remember. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. And then, and then, and then he said, yeah. He said, do you remember the one that used to wear terrible slip-ons and no, and no socks? And I went, no, I don't remember that one. He went, well, do you remember that time when he was driving and he was really fast, like to the point where people weren't convinced it would break in time for the corners? I went, oh, yeah, he was quite flat out. And then he went, yeah, but do you remember that time when the bus, the back of it caught on fire? And, <laughs> and all the kids at the back, himself included, were shouting, it's on fire. And, and, the, and the driver would be, stop messing around at the back. Stop messing around and just leave it. It was like, no, no, it's on fire. We're not messing around. And just kept going. <laughs> kept going. If I, I like, go fast enough, it'll doubt, blow it out. If slip ons flat out. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, we should probably wrap up. This, I was just getting started. This Rich. nonsense, I know, but uh, but you know, we've been going for. Have we been going for an hour? I'll be honest. I always write at the top of my notes, start the timer, and I always forget. So um, we, we prob- nearly, It's yeah. nearly an hour. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we should start to. Why? What have you got? I've got one there? more thing. Well, I mean, several. No, no, because but, when you do this, you got. I've just got one more thing to do, and it's to read out the Bible or something. No. <laughs> Do you remember I said that I drove past quite a dismal pub a few uh, oh, weeks ago yes. and there was a, a faux BTCC Mondeo for sale in the pub car park? Well, thanks to Smith & Sniff listeners, I know exactly where that is. And it's recently sold on eBay uh, last week. Um, and it was outside the Green Dragon pub, which is in fact not closed down, someone said. It's, <laughs> so I apologise to anyone. It, to me, it looked closed down. I'm really sorry, I was going past it 50 miles. I've actually got an email from the landlord of the Green <laughs> Dragon that says, <laughs> you're the reason we can't open on Mondays anymore, you bastard. Oh. <laughs> no the trace. Green Dragon in Buttington. And apparently, if you look carefully, the car is still on Google Maps. So if you're at a loose end, go on Google Maps. <laughs> around Buttington, near Welshpool. Sweet. So I wanted to put that out there. And I also wanted to put out that um, Sean Connery's Mercedes recently sold. Um, I got told about it because it was a bit of a barn find. Mercedes 300 TD turbo diesel. Seriously? Yeah. It was one he bought in America. It was American spec. Yeah. But he liked it so much, he had it brought back to the UK. And it got, it's a 1983 S-Class. Wow. It got, it got dug out quite recently, but I was thinking to myself, I mean, they were quite advanced for diesels, but... a but Bond driving a clattery TD. Yeah. I d- you can hardly hear it, Bond. <laughs> <laughs> and also... I would love to hear Sean Connery saying Mercedes turbo diesel. Oh, I yeah. Be quite, I did. And, Sean, are you running that on a bit of cherry red? <laughs> <laughs> chip fat. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Miss, Mrs. Connery's done the chips. Get that in the tank. Oh, he's... <laughs> Yeah. I imagine he had chips most nights, didn't he? With his, <laughs> with his Finder's Crispy Pancakes that he had specially imported <laughs> to Hollywood, or wherever he lived. 007 doesn't do chips every night. Oh, all right, every no. other night. Alternate, chips and waffles. <laughs> Don't talk to me about waffles. Maybe some croquettes. <laughs> <laughs> right, I sorry, we, I know I said I wouldn't do the now. accent. We need to stop. Um, before we end... <clears throat> oh, gosh. Um, we need to do three things. Uh, the first one is that, of course, Johnny has a solo YouTube channel uh, in which he runs a factory that makes crockery, garden tools, little bits of pointy wood and small cream-topped patisserie items. Uh, it's staffed by the original host of our tune on Radio 1, uh, the runner-up from 2002 Pop Idol, uh, Kevin Klein's ex-wife, who was in Gremlins, <laughs> and the man who played Commander Riker in Star Trek The Next Generation. Where's this going? Well, <laughs> as you well know, it's the make plates, rakes, steaks and cupcakes with Simon Bates, Gareth Gates, Phoebe Cates and Jonathan Flake. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Jonathan Flake show. <laughs> I've got to work. I've, I've got almost work got to the man. end of that. We got here and I suddenly went, oh, no, I haven't written one of those bloody stupid things. And they're always really complicated when we do the live show, so I wrote it in biro. (laughs) And I can't read my own fucking handwriting. (laughs) No, that was was okay, though. I I appreciate (sighs) it.
Anyway. <laughs> Thanks. There we go. Yeah. Second thing is, uh, we want to say a massive thank you to everyone here for coming out tonight. Thank um, you. We really appreciate it, and, and we are always staggered and We probably pinched ourselves that we sold some tickets, frankly. Yes. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so, yeah, it's much appreciated. Thanks to it everyone. Was, who's... Uh, particularly because we walked in that door at the back and saw how big this auditorium was, and we both shat ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're sitting in those seats up there, I do apologise, but... It's quite a big room. So uh, thank you ever so much for coming out and thank you to uh, the Eastwood Park Theatre for having us, and particularly to Martin who's done the sound which has made us so audible this evening, not always a given, particularly when we're trying to do it. So, well, we taught um, Robbins, we did warn him. Yeah, and um, thank you to Lisa who some of you may have met on the merch store who is the person who keeps us in line or at least does her level best to. And gets us here with like a toothbrush and everything. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and the third thing uh, I've got to tell you is that, um, do you know what the first ever email said? Uh, stroker? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'd love it if it said, sorry, I'm out of the office. Please try me. <laughs> but no. It, why you, I was doing those things. You know when you go to those things where you sign up for something? I had to do it to, because I thought you had to do it to charge up the car yesterday. And there's like the thing at the bottom, it's just a tick box that says, I am not a robot. Yeah. What part of computer science has realised that robots don't know how to tick things? <laughs> I'm pretty sure they can. Anyway, uh, the first email said, and I'm quoting now, something like, QWERTY YOU. <laughs> <laughs> what? Something like, QWERTY YOU. He just ran his finger along the top row of a keyboard, I presume. It was sent in 1971. Was it? By a computer engineer called Ray Tomlinson. It was sent... In, Ray was Tomlinson in, was a, a coach driver. It's a good... <laughs> and, uh, there are stories I could tell, but we don't have the time. The second email was, get your feet off the seats. Yes. <laughs> now, Ray uh, worked at... Um, uh, I don't know where, actually. I didn't write that down. But in Cambridge, <laughs> Cambridge, Massachusetts. So let's say like MIT or something. Uh, and uh, the first email was sent via ARPANET, a network of computers that was the precursor to the internet. The destination for the first email was another computer next to the first one. <laughs> was it? So, uh, yeah, that was it. The first ever text. Well, do you know what year the first ever text was sent? I don't know. 1847. What? No. <laughs> 1992. And it said... Merry Christmas. No, I don't believe you. It didn't say that. It what? said, it said uh, meet me by the yellow, um, the, the red post, off, post office box at 11, 11 p.m. I'm in the Nova SR okay, <laughs> with the shell suit on. Follow me. We'll go to the big top. There's great vibes and pills. <laughs> That's a 1992 sex message right there. Happy Christmas. <laughs> I've got a whole bag of happy Christmas in my Nova. <laughs> you can kiss my happy Christmas in the big top later. <laughs> I think we should go now. I think we should go. Yeah. But thank you ever so much for being here. Thank you for listening at home. We will do this all again soon. Until then, goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Tartan man and you know Princess Anne And you talk quite a lot about safety Your dress sense, they say, looks like you're on the way To a Scottish-themed fancy dress party Oh, Jackie Stewart Oh, Jackie Stewart Oh, Jackie Stewart Hey My name is actually copyrighted now.